Hello everyone, I'm Extra Cheesy 87 and this is Let's Play Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Part 33. Uh, Apollo Justice is actually back in the game edition. In the previous video we finished up computer stuff and now we are back on the final trial. We're facing off against Christoph Gavin who is only here because we made a very wild accusation that he was the murderer and then nobody questioned us on it. He's been blasted. That is all, Your Honor. Order, order, order! Po poison on the back of that stamp! After Drew Mission was killed, someone paid a visit to this witness's cell. Wouldn't it be funny if he was like, Yeah, I did all this shit. Because, like, I mean, in theory, this is all by accident. This is all stuff that was supposed to happen like seven years ago before he was a convicted murderer, right? So, like, I do think it would be kind of like very anticlimactic, but quite funny if just as soon as you pressed him about, did you do this? He was like, yeah, I'm in jail for life. I mean, he, there's probably, there's some reasons I can understand why he wouldn't because of like personal beef or... Apollo and Phoenix putting him in jail. I can understand not wanting to hand them this victory, but, and he's evil, incidenced by him trying to poison people and then murdering someone. But, uh, I don't know. I do, I do think that'd be funny. Because he doesn't really, like, there's no stakes for Kristoff here. Daddy? That's when he found the stamp. Once again, we have no proof of this whatsoever. You made Drew Misham write you a letter. Like, we don't even have the letter. Right? Like, I mean, I guess they could search his cell and find it. But, uh... We don't have this letter to prove our claim. That's how you killed him. What? And we are admitting to federal mail, mail fraud. I mean, I don't think that's like a serious... I mean, it's like a felony. In the U.S. at least. So, I don't know. At the very least, our evidence would not be accepted into court. In a real in a real uh, court of law. My, my. You've upset my poor brother to the point of uselessness. Well, let me clarify this matter, Justice. All you need to do is recall witness Spark Brushel's testimony. You really think they wrote an article about this guy's testimony? I don't buy it. There's no way you should know this information. Well, that's a thing. See, after he put his letter in the envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. His desk drawer? A stamp. A so-called posted stamp. The end quote. He was looking for a stamp. Ergo, he had no intention of using this stamp. Well, he just said he was looking for it. Maybe he couldn't find it, and then in his desperation, he used his daughter's uh, precious stamp. Which I've never, I still don't really know the explanation for that. I mean, I've been saying that shit was weird since the very start of the case. What are you getting at? What I'm arriving at is this commemorative stamp was in a frame. It was mere coincidence that he used it that night. That would seem to be the case. I mean, seriously, are we like, are they never going to give an explanation for why... In his desperation, he got rid of his daughter's prized possession. Because it doesn't really make any sense at all. Like, he could have just put the letter in the drawer. And then stamped it later. Like, it, I mean, I've said all this before. Because it doesn't make any damn sense. And at the time, it bothered me a little. But I assumed they were going to explain it. And now, as we approach towards the end of the game, I'm starting to wonder, maybe they just ain't gonna explain this? This very pivotal part of the case? Or perhaps you mean to suggest I can somehow manipulate coincidence? He does have a point. How would this witness know? The victim was gonna use that stamp. But that, he couldn't have planned the murder. Well, he didn't plan it. We're not claiming he planned it. We're just saying he's the cause of the poison. 
Because, I mean, we maintain that he didn't mean to kill them in this year. He meant to kill them a long time ago. You should be seeing through those weak spined bluffs by now. He's right, though. How could anyone have known Mr. Mission would use that stamp that night? Least of all, Kristoff Gavin locked away in his cell. Seems the defense has run out of things to say. You assume he had something to say in the first place. I believe the defense's bluff has been called. The defense's bluff. I'm not sure I agree with you there, Kristoff. Clavier. Honestly, I wanted to believe you. But the defense wasn't trying to get away with a bluff. You were, Kristoff. <laughs> what are you saying, Prosecutor Gavin? Her forehead. What was your accusation again? Yeah, we just said they poisoned it. We didn't say when. Uh, it was that this poison stamped clear killed Drew Misham, yeah? Which my brother responded thusly. There was no way to know when Misham would use the stamp. That's right. Which is why it couldn't have been planned. It wasn't planned. Tell me, it needs to be planned? Why? Uh, why couldn't it have been a coincidence? The defense's case is simply that Drew Mission died by that stamp, that's all. Coincidence? Kristoff, you tried to slip out from under his accusation by changing the subject. That's not, if that's not bluffing, what is it? I mean, other than the times where Gavin is legally required to be a, a doofus, like accusing Vera of murder, despite having literally no reason to accuse her, uh, he's still kind of based. And there is a slight issue where he's cooler than Apollo. So it's like, can't we, can we call this game Clavier Gavin, Ace Prosecutor? What are you up to, Clavier? I could ask you the same question, Kristoff. I mean, I do still maintain that Gavin's probably the best part of this game. Like, definitely the best part of this game. Other than his very uh, problematic introduction where he calls Trucy a sweet morsel. Which I'm just saying, if you walked up to someone and called them, walked up to a, a young girl in particular and called them a sweet morsel you can legally get punched in the face. I silence the defense with the fewest words possible. It's called efficiency. But Mr. Gavin, that's impermissible testimony. Very well, I shall take his claim head on then. Justice. Uh, me or the judge? What? You accuse me of Drew Misham's murder, yes? Then allow me to ask you. What possible reason could I have to kill a painter? Doesn't matter. Motive doesn't matter. The prosecution never needs motive. We don't need motive. Why do I always have to prove the motive? The prosecution almost never proves a motive. I'm trying I'm trying to think. Are there any cases where they prove a motive? I feel like they never do. What what was Phoenix's supposed motive for killing Guy? I don't know. He lost a card game. I guess. Weak. Weak sauce. Wouldn't stand up. What was the second case? Okay, there was there was actually a motive for the second case. I'll give him that. Granted, they didn't really have the motive at the time. At the time, the motive was just he was in the park. And he's a criminal. And he did say he did it. So they get a pass on the second case. That was just our uh, defendant being a dumbass. Third case? I don't even remember. What was the third case? Trucy! What was the third case? Oh, yeah, guy. Yeah, he had literally no motive whatsoever. <laughs> zero, zero motive. I'm trying to think previous games? Like, I don't really remember the cases that well. What was even supposed to, like, I'm trying to think of, like, 
I feel like most of them, they don't have a good motive for like why they did it. But I can't really remember the cases that clearly. A lot of them are just like a blur in my mind. And I don't think I remember them well enough to claim whether or not there was a good motive. It's hard to see how an attorney could come to want to kill a painter. Why would she want to kill her dad? They're just as ridiculous. Now here's something. Why didn't he bring up the motive from the very beginning? Unless he was afraid it was a battle he might lose. I'm trying to think, because like the very first case in the first Phoenix Wright game, I feel like there wasn't really a motive. Well, I guess it was that he dumped her, right? Or no, she dumped him, I mean. That was supposed to be the motive. I'm pretty sure there was zero motive for Maya murdering Mia. Third case was, there was a slight motive, I guess. With the samurai, fourth case. I can't remember if there was a motive at the start. Because there was like kind of a motive, but I feel like we didn't know anything about the victim and Edgeworth's relationship until like halfway through the case after it would have already been like tried for the murder. But there was at least some physical evidence in that case, a, a rare one. Fifth case, I don't remember. She was another dumb one that was like, I did that shit, right? Even though she didn't do it. I'm pretty sure she was like, yeah, I stabbed him. And then it's like, actually she didn't. But because reasons, she said she did. I don't know why we're, I'm getting, we're getting so stuck up on memory lane. I guess it's really more a test of like, do I even, I feel like the second and third games, I don't remember at all. I kind of remember the first game. Second game, not really. What does it mean? It means there might be a weak spot. Maybe if I have some evidence to prove a motive. A motive for murder. This is a vital, if not most vital element in this case. Please consider this when making your statement. Let's say it's about this vital. That's pretty vital. Well, Mr. Justice, I mean, presumably it's just the letter. Now, technically, we don't have this letter. Gonna go through with this no matter what. Understood, Your Honor. I'd like to present evidence. Let's see what you have for us. What reason did Christoph Gavin have for wanting to murder Drew Misham? So this is kind of weird though. Because I feel like this letter is not good evidence by itself. Because essentially, what we're trying to prove is that Gavin was the person who sent this envelope. We want to prove that Gavin is the one who commissioned the falsified evidence. This letter can't be the reason for why he wanted to kill him. Because this is the response, right? He died sending this letter. Gavin would not have received this letter until after Drew had died because he had already used the pre-poison stamp. So I feel like this is really bad in and of itself, but I could see it being used to establish a connection to the red letter because I feel like the red letter is a better piece of evidence than the yellow envelope. I don't know. Because I feel like the game wants me to say yellow letter, but logically, it doesn't check out. Like, I feel like the logical argument, or like the, the immediate counter would be, that doesn't make any sense. And I feel like you can't really refute what I'm saying. Because we still can't prove that he's the guy who commissioned the poisoning. We're just trying to, like, establish a connection. Because it's, it's like we know it, but we don't know it, right? And I feel like this letter is junk evidence. But I also feel like it's what the game wants me to present. But I also could completely understand if it's wrong. But I don't know. So it's like I'm mad either way. 
Well, okay, I'm really, I wouldn't be that mad if it actually penalizes me here, because I don't think this should work. But I'm also like, I think it's what the game wants from me. But I'm going to be mad if it's what I want, because it doesn't make any sense. Are you, are you penalizing me? I hope you're penalizing me. The way you present, okay. I, honestly, I don't have a problem with that. Because I don't think it makes any sense. But at the same time, I'm like, I think it's what the game wanted. Okay. So I guess it's the, the I think the red envelope makes more sense. Now, if it's not the red envelope, then I'm going to be mad. Or do they want the hidden painting? I mean, I could kind of see hidden painting, but I think red envelope makes more sense. First off, Gavin's... I, I have no complaints. I just kind of felt like the game wanted me to present the yellow. But red does make way more sense. But I guess I'm I'm pre... I'm pre-amped uh, to expect the game to do something dumb after after the damn stamp incident and the sweat incident. But no, I have no problem with that prompt. Will you consider why the stamp came to Drew Mission Studio in the first place? And why was that? Forgery, your honor. Go back seven years. Now, my main issue with the red envelope, though, I will say, is we have nothing to prove. I mean, we're just like saying, what if he was the one who sent the letter? And I just feel like that's an accusation that has like no real backing behind it. Other than just like basically a vibe check of this guy's evil because we know he's evil because we knew he was evil from the start of the case because his uh, face is on it when you click on it. Drew Misham accepts his first job creating forged evidence. I've seen that before. Bailiff, give me a flashback so I can know that I've seen it before. A page from a diary. Wasn't it Magnify Grammary's diary? Oh, when attorney Phoenix Wright lost his badge, yes. This was the evidence he presented to his loss. This evidence is a fake, yes. But did Mr. Wright request the forgery be made? That was never proven. Objection! The defense attorney on that case was Phoenix Wright. Who other than him drunk on the prospect of victory could have done it? And why would they? Just out of curiosity. Do you remember this letter? This is the first page. And this is the second. These were presented in court yesterday. This letter was sent to Drew Misham by the client who requested that forgery. The enclosed stamp was none other than the poisoned commemorative stamp. Drew Misham drew his last breath just the other day. However, the motive for his murder was already seven years old. Seven years old. The client who requested this forgery was very cautious. He tried to erase anything and anyone with connections to the forgery. To keep them from talking. But he made a mistake. Yep. I mean, he could have just said, Vera liked it. The killer's time bomb was delayed. The poison stamp was sealed with a glass frame where it sat for seven whole years. Why didn't he just like show up to his door and brain him with a bottle of grape juice? I mean, it is a little weird that he would have just left the loose end hanging for so long. You understand what you're telling us. The one who schemed up the forged diary page is the one who poisoned the stamp? And was Phoenix Wright who presented the forged evidence seven years ago? Adding the two statements together, the one who schemed to kill Drew Misham? was none other than Phoenix Wright. Well, no. Objection! It 
Sorry, but that's not how this is gonna go down. Oh, then how will it go down? I checked through the records of that case when I found this. Seven years ago, just before the trial began. Oh boy! Um, here. What's this? I don't know, just got it over there in the hall. Once again, I have no evidence to prove this, but definitely Phoenix got this from a small girl and did not commission it in any villainous way. I know it's my word against someone who committed a crime, but uh, you know, or that I'm, I'm just saying something to defend a guy who technically committed a crime. Well, at least a, a, a civil offense or something, I don't know. And one more thing. You think there would be a legal uh, file about what these guys talked about in the recess? You think, I mean, because that would mean Phoenix wrote all this down, which doesn't sound like Phoenix. And once again, it would be Phoenix's word backing his own case, you know? Phoenix Wright was put on the case the day before the trial started. Oh, that's actually a good point. He didn't have time to request a forgery. You know, that, 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 that's good. That's better than uh, a small girl gave it to him, totally for sure. The day before? And here's a question. Just who was Shoddy Ignamar's previous defense attorney? Oh, is that, oh, is that just the connection that it was Kristoff? That's kind of a little annoying because that's so lame. I was hoping there was more to it than that. But granted, the only other possible thing I could think of is that it's Kristoff is actually rigging all of Clavier's cases to make him win, which I didn't really like. But that's better than this, I think. Only a little, though. I don't really think either are great. When it is all true, it was another man, a defense attorney with a badge on his collar. It was you, Christoph Gavin. Order, order, order. What is the meaning of this? Witness, I mean defendant, or former lawyer. Let me begin by denying this. Easy enough to look up, Mr. Gavin. An impossible to prove if you can't. Attorneys are registered with the court the day before the trial begins. In other words, no record remains in the court. How exactly do you intend to prove Phoenix Wright's claim? Hmm, that would be difficult. I'm afraid the sign of inquiry won't yield. Attention! What if we summoned a uh, dude's ghost? Ooh, I totally hired this guy as my attorney. Her forehead. Are you sure you don't have evidence? Talking about Prosecutor Gavin. He looks clammy. Evidence. Evidence shows this man, Christoph Gavin, requested that forgery seven years ago. I don't think we do. Um... Okay, so we don't actually have the the confession from Zack and all that. Yeah, none of that evidence is with us. So I was trying... Yeah, because I don't, I don't think any of our new evidence would have established any connection either, even if we had the in our inventory. Clavier, just, just prove it. Clear up these doubts now, or I swear I'm off this case. You must have thought of some evidence. Apollo! I don't see the Gavin looks like he's in physical pain. That darkness. I have to pull that darkness out of him and prove is the only way I can. What proves Christoph Gavin's link to Drew Mission? Well... There's the nail polish. Like, we know she got it from him. But we can't prove that. You claim Christoph Gavin requested a forgery of June Misham seven years ago. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, I was talking. P 
prove it. It can be proven. I mean, the only thing I can think of is the nail polish, but I feel like that's not a good answer. Why even discuss it? This evidence does not. Are you telling the truth, Apollo Justice? I am. And I said we give him the benefit of the doubt. Very well. If you're wrong about this, be prepared for a penalty. Your Honor, you do the defense an injustice. Mr. Justice is clearly passionate about his claim. Should the penalty not match his passion? I haven't given a penalty like that in a long time. Well, Mr. Justice, but you do say you've had given that. There, I'm pretty sure there were one shots in previous cases, which was super annoying. Or there were like at least near one shots, I want to say. And I'm pretty sure there were cases where you could only get two things right, potentially. Or like if you got two answers wrong, it would wipe you, which was really fun. I'll have to prove is any kind of link. Something that ties Christoph Gavin to Drew Mission. And I have something that clearly does the job. The link between our witness and Drew Mission. Well, I mean, this does prove the link, at least. So this is better. This works better here now. Once again, we don't have this letter. But I assume you could theoretically search the cell and find it. So I'm going to give the game the benefit of the doubt there and say, watcha. This evidence proves there's a link. <laughs> that scrap of paper. I'm afraid I can't let you submit that. There's some problem. Oh, oh, because it's stolen. Now that's going to matter. Bro, you're too late for that shit. You were too late for that, like past case two of the first game. We've been submitting stolen evidence, like, the whole time. Nobody cares. There is. Also, how do we have this evidence again? Because Phoenix gave it back. Realistically, we should just be claiming that Phoenix saw a letter in his cell. Please go search his cell, you'll find it. Because we, we don't have anything. How could you possibly have that? You couldn't. Hey, that's Daddy's handwriting. Mr. Wright's handwriting? What does it mean to this? I see now. Yes, of course. What do you mean, of course? I just remember, I had a visitor yesterday. Phoenix Wright came to my cell, except I wasn't there. Phoenix Wright? When I returned, I saw he had something of mine in his possession. Of course, I had no intention of letting him get away with reading my private mail. Mail? You mean this letter was in your cell? N n no. However, it appears Mr. Wright has yet to be cured of his bad forging habit. Well, if it's a forgery, it's not a very good one. The handwriting's terrible. This is Mr. Wright's reproduction of what was written in the real letter. Okay. I mean, that could kind of pass as at least like a legal affidavit, right? Like, this is what I claim was in the letter. The problem is, it would then still be a he said, she said. I feel like this really should have been presented as like, go search his cell, find the real letter. Because, granted, but I mean, where would he hide it? He wouldn't really have any way to get rid of it. When Mr. Wright visited Christoph Gavin's cell, he brought with him a small video camera. Okay. That would definitely not be admitted into uh, court. What? He recorded his entire conversation with you, Mr. Gavin. And the contents of your personal mail. I don't know. It, that's kind of one of those things that depends. Because, I, I don't know. I mean, that, 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 that's a law that's not, like, concrete everywhere. But, like, whether or not you have to notify someone of whether you're recording them or not. But even in some cases where it's, like, legal, it won't, it may not be accepted as evidence depending on the circumstances. And I think in a situation where you're uh, looking at someone's mail, 
like their own private personal mail, I don't think you could videotape that and then present it in court. This mockery of a piece of evidence will never be accepted by the court. Evidence based on a video of a man with no authority whatsoever claims he took. A man who happens to be an ex-attorney suspected of forgery? I mean, Kristoff, I think, has a pretty good argument. Prosecutor Gavin? Prosecutor Gavin? As embarrassing as this is for me to say, I'm afraid my brother is incapable of making rational judgments at the moment. Your Honor, your decision, please. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be up to the prosecutor in the first place. He doesn't get to decide what evidence gets accepted. It would be the judge. And realistically speaking, I feel like this evidence wouldn't be accepted. Even if it maybe should be, the defense's claim is denied. Only actual evidence is permitted in a court of law. I mean, I, this is one of the one of the closest things we've gotten to like a real like kind of plausible legal ruling in terms of uh, evidence. So, I mean, I kind of like it. Please remove the defense's evidence from the record. Better luck next time, Justice. And that's pretty realistic. There are a lot of times where cases are decided based on whether or not a piece of evidence is allowed to be entered into the court. Well, we've certainly taken a detour from a cross-examination. But the defense appears to be lacking proof. I'm forced to end the cross-examination of Christoph Gavin at this point. Apollo, do something! I'm thinking, but without evidence, I don't have anything I can use on him. Except for this gun. Very well. This ends the witness's cross-examination. Objection! It's me! The show's over, yet the crowd screams for more. Only now do I understand why. Pr Prosecutor Gavin? Why is everybody gonna interrupt me? Every time I'm trying to end something early, and go, go on early lunch, everyone jumps in at the last second. Oh, objection! When is it gonna be my time to say objection to your objection, case over? You're all guilty. I decide who lives and dies. I mean, I guess there's this whole jury thing that we're experimenting with, but that, that'll never stick. They'll, they'll, they'll never actually use that going forward. It's a one-time flirty experiment. Everyone knows old men with gavels rule best. This has been bothering me for seven whole years. And I'm tired of the whole youthful angst scene. Now's our chance. Let's clean up the family closet, eh, Kristoff? This game really should just be called Clavier Gavin. Because he honestly feels way more important to the storyline. Like, I feel like he makes a much better protagonist than Apollo. He's, like, different than Phoenix. I, I do think the actual storyline of, like... Like, I think it would actually be pretty cool if you started the game with Clavier's first case. Like, that would be interesting. Right, like, your first case is going up against Phoenix, right? You manage to win in quotes because he fucks up and loses and then flash forward several years you're doing more cases I don't know I think that'd be kind of cool you can even have a case where you know you're like you could still kind of have the rock star case where Clavier's kind of uh, involved with the murder potentially and is also doing his own defense I don't, I don't know I think there's some cool stuff I, I actually I think would you do, you'd have to tweak some stuff but I think based on just this game alone, Clavier would be a more compelling protagonist. I mean, there is some background stuff that I assume will maybe be expanded upon more in, like, the next games that are sequels to these. You know, the whole Apollo having magic blood and the Lammy Roar connection and all that, or, you know, my presumed connection to the Lassabee and Lammy Roar, which I guess we technically don't know yet. Um... And, you know, him being the brother to Trucy and all that. But I don't know. I do think, like, just if you were to encapsulate this game and, like, if it didn't have any other potential, like, sequels to build off of, Clavier's a better protagonist if you were to tweak some stuff. Calm yourself before you say anything you'll regret. 
So, I mean, there's kind of a cool arc there, right? Maybe you're relying on Kristoff at the start. I mean, there is kind of that in this game as well, where Kristoff is your, uh, what you call it? Like, counsel in the very first case? But I think it would be better if it's like, you know, it's your older brother helping you out and you win your first case with him and then it's ultimately revealed that he had been rigging your cases and is a bad dude and then you have to send him to jail. Spinning out of whose control? Mine or yours? Take a moment to consider everything you've built. Your reputation as a prosecutor. Your fame with the masses. You could lose it all, Clavier. It does also mean that if he, if he like, was the original defense attorney, that he was scared he was going to lose to Clavier, which means he's a little loser boy as well. Because he would have known Clavier was going to be the prosecutor. Did you see that? He's trying to press Prosecutor Gavin. Prosecutor Gavin, try and remember. What's really important to you? You amuse me, her forehead. I couldn't forget what's really important to me, even if I tried. In fact, I haven't. Not even once. Seven years ago. <laughs> Back when I was real cool. You just couldn't resist, could you, her right? If there's any solid evidence, I'd have request you put the current cross-examination on hold. Hello, it's me, Drew Mission. I'm familiar with the trial. I've watched the video several times. Yeah, <laughs> several. Didn't you find anything unnatural about it? Unnatural? Well, you did seem unusually well prepared. I mean, Mr. Wright had only just presented his evidence. And the next moment you call in Drew Mission? It was almost as if... Almost as if what? Funny, it didn't even occur to me to wonder. Well, it occurred to me, I mean... I mean, granted, we knew Kristoff was involved with the case from the start, so... It's a little bit easier for us to make the, you know, connection when he immediately was like... That's fake? Almost as if from the very beginning, you knew Mr. Wright was going to present that evidence. Correct. I knew that if I'd applied the usual pressure, Phoenix Wright would eventually come up with that forged diary page. Don't do this, Clavier. I knew because you told me, Kristoff. What? What? It was the night before the trial. And we already knew this, but I guess I never really thought about that. Like, it is weird that he never questioned how Kristoff would have known that. Like, like what, what Kristoff's explanation was for how he knew that Phoenix was going to present false evidence. I mean, I think there's several plausible explanations. Like one, my, the first thing that jumps to my mind would be if I was trying to explain it, I would say Zach kicked me off the case because Phoenix Wright offered to do something shady that I didn't want to do. Be on the lookout for false evidence. Maybe even like potentially of a diary page. Like that would be my explanation. Like just kind of like a rough outline of like my first thought process. If I was asked to explain how I knew he was going to present falsified evidence if I had been on the case first, I would just say I got kicked off by Zach because he wanted to forge some fake evidence and Phoenix got brought on because he w was willing to do so. And I mean, I think that. That seems like on first blush, that seems to make sense. I won't actually be appearing in the trial. Why not? I won't be facing off with you on your first trial, apparently. But in exchange, I brought information. Information? The attorney who'll be there in my place tomorrow is not to be trusted. Don't even give him the benefit of your respect. Listen, I want you to call in a special witness. Then, I wondered about it at the time. How did Kristoff know so much? 
Kristoff. We were supposed to face each other in that trial, or we were. A fair fight. Brother to brother. I deserve that much. You let me borrow the victim's belongings. You showed me all your research on the case. The victim's belongings? Which would have included Magnifi's diary, wouldn't it? Mr. Gavin? Hi, my Clavier. You disappoint me. You find trees, you had missed the forest. You're the one missing the forest, Mr. Gavin. You can't sweep this under the rug. Not anymore. Tell me, what was going on behind that trial? Why not? I've achieved what I came here to do. I see no harm in a little reminiscing. Apollo. Uh, no one gonna talk about that I achieved what I came here to do line? No one thinks that's a little sus? No, no one? Okay, just me. When he detonates a poison gas bomb and you all die, don't say I didn't warn you. You've done everything we could hope, it's enough. Seven years ago, the same day before the trial, I visited the detention center at the request of my client, Zach Grammery. Someone didn't win the cards. You lose, Gavin. Thanks for the work. Now go! Probably not the smartest legal idea in hindsight. Because, I mean, if he didn't... Uh, he was going to end up representing himself because he could, because he was too good at poker. To be honest, I don't know what his reasons were to this day. As far as I could tell, he dismissed me as his representation because I lost in a game of poker. See, that's not what you should be saying. You should be saying that he wanted to create false evidence and you declined. He removed you for Phoenix. Phoenix is a sussy boy. And like, yeah, okay, I like murdered that guy, but like, you know, whatever. People make mistakes, all right? People can change. I'm just concerned that the jury doesn't think people can change. Man was called Shady Smith. Maybe he deserved to get brained with a bottle of grape juice. Am I really a criminal? Jury, I ask you this. I mean, yes, legally speaking, I'm a criminal. But like, do I look like a criminal? Don't I look like I would be the type that the fandom would swoon over and draw fan art of? Despite me being a vile, murderous human being, they would write lengthy essays about how what I did wasn't really that bad. I can come to no other conclusion. Dad used to say something. You want to know a man, you have to compete. Mac wasn't watching his points of the cards. He was watching the man behind the cards, Christoph Gavin. I mean, he does look pretty evil when he does that. I probably wouldn't want that man. If, I'm just saying, if my lawyer did that po pose, I'd be like, ah, right, maybe... Maybe this is the guy I want. Yeah, he'll make sure I'm not guilty. I couldn't believe it. Phoenix right. Second-rate attorney who relies on luck and bluffs? He just missed me and went with that pitiful excuse of a man? He deserved to die from that era alone. Hold it! The one who requested that forgery was... Oh, I'm not admitting anything. My point is... These two men shame me and I could not forgive that. Phoenix Wright and Zach Grammy both deserve what they got. So you asked Mr. Misham to forge that evidence. So you could win? But then... When you were dismissed as Zach Grammy's attorney... You used your forged evidence as a trap? Well, see, that doesn't really make any sense. Because he wouldn't have had time. Because, I mean, the original claim was Phoenix couldn't afford the evidence because he was a replacement. But didn't he just claim that he got fired, like, the day before? Like, I don't know, like, the timeline, I guess, is a little fuzzy to me. 
Because he made it sound like he fired them on like their first meeting. Because he lost cards and then immediately hired Phoenix. Which would mean there wouldn't have been enough time to create the forgery. Uh, I don't know. Then you gave your dirty evidence to him. You're free to imagine what you will. My point is that all I had imagined came to pass. Because it makes more sense that he forged the evidence because he wanted to win the case. Because, I mean, the only way it would have came out that he forged the evidence... Because, I mean, normally it would have just been accepted, right? And we would have won the case. So it seems kind of weird in that sense. Like, I feel like the original assumption that it's like, okay, he pre-forged this evidence so that he could win the case against his brother makes a bit more sense than he immediately forged evidence as a trap to beat Phoenix, even though we just previously established the timeline, was that Phoenix couldn't have done that, but he had like one extra day. I don't know. Seems a little weird. Everything went perfectly. Incredible. If I wasn't laughing, I'd weep. Oh, Shooter Gavin? Perfectly? You're mad, Kristoff. Stop fooling yourself. What are you talking about, Clavier? Tell me, how did that trial end? Cancelled. The defendant vanished. I get it. So, Kristoff, you've been living in fear for seven years. What? You were afraid your forgery would be revealed and your reputation thrashed. You couldn't leave things to chance. So you watched everyone involved with the case for seven years. You now I always felt like he was being watched. That's what he said. Every day. For seven years. But I felt it too. Journal is sure he's being watched, end quote. I mean, does man not have a hobby? Don't you wonder why Zach Grimm got rubbed out over seven years? Right after coming into contact with me? Wait, just a minute. Is that Grimmie was seen by this reporter? Uh, how'd you see that flashback? Judge, Judge, how'd you see that flashback? Defeat, did, did Apollo, did Apollo do the voice? Did, did Apollo just mime out a conversation that he heard from Phoenix? Like, like I mean, let, let, let's go through the process here of what they just said. Or what, what we have to assume is, is what's happening. Apollo is acting out a conversation that he, for some reason, was told to by Phoenix. So he acted out a secondhand conversation of Phoenix and Guy talking in front of everyone. That's the only way the judge could have could have seen what he just saw. Was he alive after being gone for seven years? Fine. I knew this moment was coming. I just didn't think we'd get there so fast. Zach Grammary gone. Missing for seven years. Trucy's father. And I guess your step dead. What's wrong, Apollo? Go get him. Right. Leave it to me. Allow me to refresh the court's memory. Six months ago, Christoph Gavin was charged with murdering a mysterious traveler. I remember quite well. He was shady. Shady Smith. Poisoned at a Chinese restaurant. Tragic. The details don't really matter right now. What matters is that the traveler was Zach Grammary. Oh, do you have any proof of that claim? Absolutely none. What is it, Apollo? Huh? Keep going. We'll talk about it later. Did, did she already know? Does she? Does she know that? I don't. I'm actually. I'm not sure at this point if she's supposed to know or not. I, I don't think she's supposed to know, but I don't know. Maybe Phoenix will talk to her. Mr. Justice, can you explain this? It all started seven years ago. 
The greatest magician Magnify Grammarie's death started it. The greatest magician? I don't know. I don't know if he's the greatest magician. How many busts did he have? I haven't seen not one bust. I mean, apparently, Zack and them here, Valant won a bust, he claimed. Magnify, where's his bust? Ain't got no ring, he can't be the greatest of all time. I, that's, that's all I'm saying. No hate on the dead, but I'm, I'm just saying. Magnify Grammarie's death and his student, Zack Grammarie the suspect. Whoever defeated Zack in court successfully would be famous beyond belief. Thinking that, Christoph Gavin did the unthinkable. He forged evidence. Okay, so maybe they are claiming that he forged the evidence before talking to him and then he got fired. Because the way he said it there earlier was that he forged the evidence as retribution. But I think that's maybe just the script was a little muddled. And it is what they would you would originally assume is that he pre-forged the evidence a few days before the case to ensure that he won. And not as a last minute retribution against Phoenix. Because that makes more sense, is that he originally was going to use it to win the case, not forge evidence to lay a trap on Phoenix because he was mad. Actually, it was his daughter Vera who really did the work. You took precautions and you had that forgery made, didn't you, Mr. Gavin? Precautions? To keep people from talking, of course. You soon know too much. Leave them alive and there'll be nothing but trouble. I see you planned your poisoning of the forgers. Atriquin. Applied to a commemorative stamp? But luck was on Mr. Mission's side. The bomb didn't go off. His daughter! She saved him by taking the stamp, I see. Well, you know, this is probably the part where I'd feel guilty about almost sent her to prison like three times in a row. I was pretty ready to declare guilty on basically no evidence whatsoever. Is this the part where I do some personal inter introspection? Ah, nah, the case has got to keep going. But that wasn't the only bomb he set up. The Ardenay nail polish, of course. You notice something you requested that forgery. And Vera Misham is nervous, she has a bad habit. A tendency to bite her nails. Ah! That nail polish was her good luck charm. She was almost kidnapped once. Since then, she's been... Well, you can see for herself. She refuses to leave the house. I, mean, I forgot about the kidnap part. That person gave me a good luck charm for when I absolutely had to go outside. It protects me. Yes, apparently she received something. A gift. You won't tell me what it was. It was from that client, the one who wanted that note made. It was his insurance. Insurance? Hey, bailiff! Do I, have, I, have I paid my insurance? Do I get insurance for this job? I, probably. Am I insured by bailiff? Please, please check. I'm, I'm thinking palpitations just thinking about it, and I really don't want to pay. If I, if I die. I mean, I guess if I die, it won't matter. But apparently I have a wife that I need to care about the medical debt that will crush her. If I were to die. Without insurance. Or even with insurance, probably. As long as she lived quietly at home, there was no danger to her. What if she had to go outside? If she ran into any trouble, she'd become nervous. And the nail polish would do the rest. Yeah, I'm already ahead of you guys. I figured that out. If you're finished. May I return to my cell now? I'm not accustomed to standing for such long periods of time. Bro, all you got to do is get jacked. You tell me you haven't been doing endurance training in there? You haven't been working on that dope prison bod in case you somehow get parole? You get to go to the outside world and be a 60 year old built guy? Have you heard a single thing we've said? Oh, I listened quite closely to your little tale. Quite an entertaining piece of fiction. 
Yeah, you're right. We literally can't prove it. What? Clavier, surely you understand. I mean, I said we couldn't prove it back when we presented the nail polish and everyone just went along with it for some unforsakable reason. Unforsakable? Unex inexplicable reason. We're back to the evidence, the lacking evidence. Nothing proves a link between him and the Atrocrine that took Drew Misham's life. Objection! What about the restaurant? You killed Zach Grammer. They keep him from talking. But then again, us not having evidence doesn't matter. We didn't have any evidence that Vera killed Misham, and you guys were very close to executing her. We have presented a more plausible theory and story. Therefore, that should be enough. Execute this man. And let's move on with our day. I killed no man of that name. Read over the report again if you like. The victim was a traveler by the name of Shoddy Smith, about whom we know little else. You can't seriously think I knew he was that particular fugitive. Okay, then why did you kill him? I plead my right to remain silent. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a right to not incriminate yourself, but, you know, you've already been convicted of the crime. Actually, I'm pretty sure you can't. I feel like that's actually a thing, at least in the U.S. Like, if you've been convicted of the crime, you no longer have the right to not self-incriminate in regard to that crime. I feel like, I think there's something like that. And I mean, I know, of course, the game is technically based in the Japanese legal system. This is more just like a like a thought thing. Granted, I'm pretty sure, I mean, some of the legal systems are the same, right? Just because the U.S. is involved in the creating of the Constitution of Japan after World War II. And I think things like, I think their fifth, like they don't have what's called a Fifth Amendment, but they have a lot of like, you know, similar concepts that are in there. And I'm pretty sure like self-incrimination kind of works the same. So it'd be kind of just like an interesting thought experiment here. Or not really thought experiment, just, you know, drawing a real-world parallel. Remember this court did not convene to put me on trial. The defendant's name is Vera Mission, suspected in the murder of her father. My trial's been finished for six months now. I think there is something about that. that like, if you've been convicted of the crime, you can know... Because, I mean, the right, the right to remain silent, right, or pleading the fifth, so to speak, that idea is that you can, you don't have to incriminate yourself. But he wouldn't be incriminating himself since he's already been convicted of that crime, right? Now, he could just refuse to say anything and I guess just, I don't know, be like intent of court or something, which wouldn't really matter for him, but... I'm afraid we've strayed considerably from our purpose here. This court concurs with the witness. It is defendant if your mission was on trial here. But you were doing so good, Apollo. As long as there's no evidence to support the accusation against him, this course of inquiry cannot find Vera Mission in You're not it's not about just finding her innocent. You don't you don't declare someone innocent, you declare them not guilty. That's not how the law works. No one is ever declared innocent. Ever. In any case, in the history of any legal system in any country, you don't you don't you don't find innocence. You find not guilt. Objection. Your Honor, Phoenix Wright spent seven years collecting this evidence. Objection. You still don't get it, do you? That line actually kind of pisses me off. Let us assume there was poison in the nail polish. Who then was responsible for causing Vera Misham to bite her nails? Well, presumably you. What? It wasn't me? I know that much. I mean, that doesn't really matter at all. We just claim that you noticed the habit. And even then, whether or not she bit her nails is not the point, right? If you just established that he was the one who t gave it to her as a good luck charm, and then told her to only use it when she goes outside. Because, I mean, even if you don't bite your nails, it's pretty feasible that you could just, like, touch your face or something and get some poison on your lips and then die. 
So, I feel like this part doesn't really make any sense. Granted, we can't, we still can't prove that he's the one who gave the nail polish. Much less that he instructed her to use it as a good luck charm when she goes outside. The one who brought that poison to our lips was you. What? Evidence is everything. There's nothing more. I believe this discussion has reached its conclusion. I really get. Was that just him saying that, like, him accusing us is, or like, our accusation of him is as valid as him accusing us? Because I mean, there is a point. I mean, as I said, when we initially presented the nail polish. We have no evidence backing it up. It's just a vibe check. Your Honor, Mr. Justice, you will perform admirably well for a novice attorney. I respect your partner. Phoenix Wright's determination as well. Even though uh, <laughs> he wasn't allowed to be in the game. However, without direct proof, you have nothing. You, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're already in prison. This is a this is a victory for us because in theory, you shouldn't be able to declare her guilty. You have no evidence of her guilt. There is clearly enough shadow of a doubt that you would never convict her. This trial would be thrown away. The prosecution would drop its case. They'd take the L because it would be a bigger uproar to try and convict this dying girl at this point. It's ridiculous. Unfortunately, yes, Kristoff, you're right. That is, you would have been right until now. What? Did the news not reach your desk in solitary? Oh, is she okay and she's gonna testify? The eyes of the nation are on this courtroom today. Bro, there'd be fucking riots in the streets. This is the trial case for a new judicial system. Right, I'm totally forgotten. The jurist system. I mean, I can get not finding him guilty, because I don't think there's enough evidence to find Kristoff guilty. But the idea that it's like, well, if he didn't do it, she had to, is so annoying. The current judicial system is determined to be too closed off from society. The new system attempts to inject the wisdom of the common citizens into the law. The people of the land, the common clay, you know, morons. Common citizens, wisdom, is this some kind of joke? What can we possibly gain by doing this? Trusting our judicial system to, system to a mindless, emotional mob of irrational mouth breathers? Hey, they're gonna decide your fate. It's probably not good to insult them. Common citizens have something called common sense. Common sense is not restricted by the law. <laughs> Nonsense, there's only Room and two, or two in the law, in the court, me and the law. I was, okay, so that's what they're going for, right? Because, I mean, they did say at the start, the case couldn't be solved by conventional methods. So we're just going to present enough evidence to uh, vibe check his ass. Which is also not good, by the way. Um, I mean, I don't know. Shit is complicated, right? Like, I don't have a strong opinion on whether a jury system or a solo judgeship is better or worse. They both have really big problems. And I don't even really think a combined system is like all that good either. Because you still basically have the problems of both, which is, I mean, you know, the biggest problem with the jury is right. Like it's very easy for like one person to have an like too big of an influence, right? People are prone to being obstinate. A lot of times it's hard to make people care about cases. I mean, we're not, we're not going to go into it too much, but you know, there's a lot of problems with the jury system and there's a lot of problems with the solo judgeship, right? It's very easy for judges to just be, as said earlier, cut off from society, more easily influenced. Uh, a lot of times they're appointed for like life or very easily reelected and they have a tendency to sometimes be morons. You know. 
keep the riffraff out. How'd I say? There isn't there's really a, a good answer, I think. But not on the court, actually. They're watching everything by video camera from inside their room where they talk to themselves. How can you allow this? Incidentally, the one responsible for making this happen is Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Phoenix Wright? Okay. So, I don't actually know if... Like, we're kind of feel closer to the end of the game than I thought. Normally, I'd end the video here, but... What I think we're going to do is I'm going to keep recording. And if the game ends in the next like 30 to 40 minutes, this will be the finale. And if it doesn't, we will start a new video here. Yeah. So, I mean, you'll know if it's the finale or not when you click on the video. But I will not know for a little while longer. Cause I feel like there's like a, I feel like it's possible the game ends in the next 15 minutes or the next hour. Like I could see there's still being a lot more you could do, but I could also see this being like the end of the case. I won't accept, I can't accept, this is no court. Law, law, the law is everything, law is absolute. You let ignorant swine spoil your courts? First off, it's over. Clavier, the law is absolute. You can't be serious. What? Odd. I thought you spent your life looking for loopholes. Law isn't absolute. It's filled with contradictions. The law is the end product of many years of history, the fruit of human knowledge. Like a gem polished to a gleam through trials and many, 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 many years. It is this fruit we receive and pass on and face in our time. It is always changing, growing, nurturing. It is our task as human beings. Except for you, Kristoff. You aren't changing. You've stopped. You're not needed anymore. I couldn't think of anything to say. That's because it's not your fucking story, Apollo. I'm gonna be honest. Your ass is grass. I don't even like dislike Apollo, but he feels pretty incidental in his own game. Maybe because I still haven't seen enough. But someday, I don't know what law is, and I'll fight to change it if I have to. I mean, I think especially in this last case, where it's like... This is Clavier and Phoenix's story. So you don't need to further prolong this trial. Bro, literally like seven seconds ago, you were like, Vera's not innocent. Began as a trial of Vera mission, accused of murdering her father. The painter, true mission, however. Several other incidents were reviewed and we seem to have reached a conclusion. Before this court declares a verdict, however, I await your decision. Jurors of the court. For the death of true mission, how do you find the defendant, Vera mission, innocent? Or guilty. It's not guilty or guilty. You don't find people innocent. I turn to you now to consider this matter. You can think somebody did that shit and still find them not guilty. I'm just saying. I'm clicking not guilty if it asks me. This ends the trial for this case. Only the verdict remains to be decided. Defendant Vera Misham is currently in intensive care. Yeah, I did think they were going to be like, ah, she's magically recovered. Now she's going to testify that she was kidnapped or something. But it seems like they're not going to prolong it. Which is kind of fine, but at the same time, it feels like the actual trial portion is a little short. I mean, I guess the initial opening trial was kind of long. And you did have a very extended investigation sequence and the second, like the flashback trial. But there is kind of an element of, like, the final trial bit does feel a little anticlimactic. Like, I guess, I guess, I mean, there was really only, what, like, four prompts, I feel like? 
Because you got we had the opening prompt with the nail polish, I think. And then there were like two other prompts in that final super prompt. Oh yeah, because we only did the one cross examination, right? Yeah, we only did one. That that's probably why it feels so like kind of lackluster. It's because there was just the one. And it was like the even the the little viewy thing was pretty easy. Factors involved are simple. Did the defendant poison her father that night? If so, she is guilty. Or was there another reason for Mr. Mission's death? Did another po person poison him? If so, she is innocent. A panel has been uh, provided for each of you to input your decisions. That is all. Please, wait! Yes, jurist number six? There's something in the jurist handbook here. Persons involved with the case may not be jurists. That is correct. I've looked into all your dossiers. None of you are involved with the development of the case. <laughs> with the development of the case? I see. Does that answer your concern? It's time for your verdicts. Make your decision in the case against Vera Misham. After seven years, the truth is ready to be heard. Judge wisely. Judge well. No? <laughs> Can I bat? Oh god, it's fucking Larry Roar! Oh. Oh, she's supposed to be... Okay, that's actually kind of neat. I was like, I've been kind of rolling my eyes a little bit internally at this, uh... At, like, the meta angle of... The, the Juris thing? But actually being Lamior is pretty cool. Bro, she can't see, though. <gasps> Bro, she can't see! Maybe she's over it. I mean, part of me does want to click guilty, just because I think it'd be funny. I mean, presumably, even if we pick guilty... Well, I don't know. How, how does it work? Can we, can we get deadlocked? Can we get a hung jury? Because, I mean, a hung jury is a victory for us. Because realistically, it shouldn't matter what we pick. Because the other five should vote not guilty. Okay, it's been a while since we saved, so we'll say not guilty. And then whatever you click, she clicks the opposite of. If she can't see. I'm just saying, in theory, our choice should not matter. Because either it's that it does require a unanimous verdict and then they're like, well, they couldn't reach unanimous verdict so the jury is hung or they just do by like popular vote or like, you know, greatest number. And then in theory, the other five should not be morons and vote not guilty. The first verdict from the jury system. Innocent by unanimous... You don't declare someone innocent. The record will show. And when the verdict was announced, special witness Christopher Gavin laughed. A laugh louder than ever heard before. More sense. Yeah, good, because I, I don't like to, to do loud noises. A laugh that echoed in the halls of justice, lingering for what seemed like hours. And then he blew up the courtroom. Okay, we're not. I don't know, there was that one, that line about like, I've came, I've done here, I've done what I came to do. That shit seemed a little sussy. In an intensive care ward, a true miracle occurred. Vera Misham opened her eyes. Like, I, I was really expecting like a, like something more to happen during all that. Bro, why would we take her here? Is the cure to atrocine poisoning sexual assault? Because you know she did not receive quality care at this place. Vera, I'm so glad I... Don't cry, Apollo. I'm happy too, and proud. You did well, Apollo. And I thought about... What if Vera, I... Hey, now don't you start crying too. Sorry you had to see us like this. Vera? Thank you so much, Apollo. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have pressed you like that. If I hadn't, you never would have bitten your nails. 
Oh, that's what he meant. Bro, that's dumb. She was biting him all the time. No, I was wrong. I ain't locked inside like that. Clean to my good luck charm. When I opened my eyes, I saw you. I finally understood. It's important to be a part of the world. Mm, debatable. This world tried to kill you, so, you know. To see things with your own eyes. I mean, I feel like the moral of the story is don't go outside. She stayed inside, and she wasn't poisoned. She went outside immediately poisoned. Stats don't fucking lie. Looks like the poison had some effect after all. It killed off whatever was holding Vera back from life. Yeah, just drink poison. Good, good advice, Apollo. I knew you'd pull through, Vera. If you're feeling bad, like you can't face the world, just drink some poison. It'll kill off your bad vibes. Apollo is apparently a doctor from the year 1830. Ah, just drink some shit. It'll make you feel better. Your future. I won't forget it. Here, let me thank you. <laughs> no, really, it's okay. He's got like a big buck tooth. Hey, that's not me. You, you even had a picture of us. Look, it's me. I love it. Thanks. Is that me? She really captured your essence, Apollo. Well, I think so, at least. That reminds me. You know where the other lawyer is? The other lawyer? Oh, you mean daddy? Except he's not a lawyer anymore. It's my fault, isn't it? I'm sorry. No, no, that's not what I meant. I mean, it's your dad's fault. I don't really put any blame on the child. And he got what was coming to him. I do like how they... I mean, when I say I do like, it pisses me the fuck off. Uh, they never explain the central... Like, inciting incident of why the hell did he use the stamp? That was, like, the real mystery to me. Why was it so sudden and important that he had to break into the prize possession is so dumb it makes no sense game is bad I don't really mean that but it is kind of annoying I'm through looking away from the things I've done I hope I can look him in the eyes again someday and apologize I'm sure he'd be happy to hear that unfortunately he's dead he brought all those things for me when he came to visit earlier. You know that stack of videos? Mr. Wright finished watching them all? You know, I knew my real daddy was alive. Huh? I was there seven years ago, remember? I was the one who helped him vanish from the courtroom. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. You did what? Huh? I'm not telling. He promised me that day he went away. We may not meet again for some time, Trucy. But know this, I will be watching and one day I shall return. You're the next Grammary after all. Wrong. He's the next right. Trucy, in the end he couldn't keep that promise, could he? It's okay. Phoenix is my daddy now, even if he can't really play the piano. Daddy can't. Oh, and I've got you too. Even if your voice is kind of loud sometimes. They still didn't explain like how she knew that Shadi was her dad. Because that was like treated as like something she shouldn't know. Hey, come to think of it, where is Daddy? The one who can't play. You know, Apollo? I think he said he had to meet someone. Hmm, I wonder. Maybe it's a new mommy. Uh. Oh, Trucy. Yes, Fira? I was wondering, could you show him to me once more? It's her hat, was it? Oh, he's not been knighted yet. Here goes, do us an impersonation, Mr. Hat. Objection! <laughs> Him! 
Not loud enough. And I like Miss Magic Underwear better anyway. Shut up, Apollo. Shut up. Magic panties, Apollo. These motherfuckers actually ended their game with a panty joke. Alright, I'll, I'll change my mind. The game is ass. So, your memory's returned. It's me! Lamb your roar! Mr. Wright, was this all a part of your plan too? I don't know what you're talking about. The, the lamb your roar thing is kind of clever. I'll give him that. I like that. I lost my memory. I was reborn as Lamy Roar. I mean, I do feel kind of... I mean, we... I guess that shit super early. Like, I think as early as you could feasibly guess that Lamy Roar was her mom. I mean, it was like second video trial three. I'm pretty sure. Maybe third video. But you knew my true identity, did you not? That is why you chose me as one of your jurists. Oh yeah, she's supposed to... Well, maybe she... Nah, nah, she's still got... She's still got to talk funny. What, what did she sound like? Oh god, I can't remember. There was no guarantee that regaining your memory would make you happy. Of course, it is happy thing! <laughs> For so long, I thought I was alone. But now I know I have children, two dear children. Does make me wonder, why did I abandon one of them even before the memory loss? Maybe I am the bad mom. I'm so proud of them. This too, I think, is thanks to you. You going to tell them? They do not know? Nope. They don't know their mother. They don't even know their siblings. I will go to them when the time is right. What do you mean when the time is right? God, what is with this game and encouraging deadbeat parenting? For this series. Don't worry. I'll take care. What do you mean the time is... God! You have an obligation to be there for your children. Don't have kids if you're not going to be there for them. They're... Very important to me too. A little annoying at times, but still. I have to keep an eye on her, at least. Because I'm the only one who knows how she really feels on the inside. Your bracelet. Yes? A lot of mysterious things these past seven years. Your bracelets are the strangest of all. I mean, I think the Magatama is still cooler. I mean, that's like actually real spirit power. I remember meeting him half a year ago in Christoph Gavin's office. And then I met you. Two fates destined to intertwine, and I was there when they crossed. I'll never forget that. Such a small thing that's bullet you to tore away who I was. Ten years ago, during a simple rehearsal. Wait, ten years? No, 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 yeah, yeah, that, that checks out, yeah, because she said she had the kid seven years prior to that. So yeah, Apollo wouldn't be old enough to remember her. Because for a second I was like, wait, wouldn't Apollo be 14 then? But yeah, 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 those are seven years on top of that. It was a miracle no one died, but I didn't survive that accident. That is why I left the troop, my family. I mean, it still doesn't make any damn sense to me. That, like, they knew, like, I, I don't know, like, it's still not clear to me, like, they knew she survived. She survived, but with no memory loss, so she ran, like, it, it, it makes no sense why you would just abandon your family like that. I mean, there. I could see like the only explanation is that Magnify hid the fact that he that she lived for some reason. Now yeah, my memory has returned. I am myself once more. For the first time, I am glad to be alive, Mister Wright. Speaking of miracles, your mission regained consciousness this morning. I can only hope she's as glad as you are. It is a strange thing, Le Fate. Sometimes that life is taken, sometimes that life is spared. 
Sometimes someone cuts you off in traffic and you want to kill them. You know what I've been thinking? People don't die that easily, really. As long as they got something worth living for. Bro, don't say that's toxic. That's some toxic ass shit to say, Phoenix, right? Oh, if you died, you didn't have anything worth living for? Fuck off. I know you didn't mean it that way, but that's what you think for you say shit. That's pretty much the end of my story. Ah, oh, bro, I, I'll just go on text. I've still got a long way to go, and this power mine, well, it needs some work. But there's hope now. We lost it, but somehow we found it again. That's why people are smiling again. Hope. Yeah, I think I'll keep it this little thing for a while. Oops, training time. Gotta go cords of steel. Here comes justice. Objection! I don't know. Game's okay. I'm glad you're staying with the agency, Apollo. It's like, like I found my long lost big little brother. Oh, and uh, don't you worry about Troop Grammary. Trucy's on the case. Now that I have this thanks to Daddy. Trucy Grammary, frankly, I have my doubt, grouts. But Hack Grammary, now that'll pack him in. So was Valan in prison? Because his ass should be grass. It's not every day you gotta try the rocks harder than one of our gigs, yeah? Yeah, I still have the guitar. Shut up. That's why it's over. The Gavineers are breaking up, baby. The news caused a run on tissues at supermarkets nationwide. You're the real stars now, baby. I look forward to our next jam session. I don't know, I'll save my thoughts until the end. But yeah, so this did end up being the finale. Yeah, the final trial was really short. That's finally over. You know, thinking about it. I've been a piano player for longer than I was a lawyer. Now that everything's sorted, I've got time on my hands. Maybe I'll take some lessons. Maybe I'll take the bar exam. Again. I mean, in theory, there's no reason he couldn't be recertified as a lawyer. If it was proven in court that... Or, well, I guess it technically wasn't proven that he was framed, but, I mean, he basically admitted to it. Now, granted, if we really wanted to be a true legal thing, uh, somebody could admit to, like, having done the killing, and they'd be like, nah, you still have to stay in jail. I got this crazy idea. What if they were golden snackos? You could augment the crunch, or better yet, make them ding. Ah, uh, the power of science. Although the preservatives might not be 100% safe. But the lead, it just tastes so good. But she kind of interrupted, well, I, I can't say nothing. In unlikely event you are wanting Russian feast, come to a boss ball club. Only thing colder than something is borscht. Ah, but if greater challenge is being required, then come to hideout. You know who to ask for. Oh, I couldn't really capture it. Um, but my joke there earlier was about how sometimes people can be convicted of a crime. We can literally prove they didn't do that shit and courts won't overturn the conviction. But, uh, what was I saying? But basically, I mean, I guess in theory Phoenix can be a lawyer again. Bro, I forgot you existed. So, Kataka Pastries are getting back to the East Roots. Spread the culture and all. Yo, boss! Culture time! This is how we write root. The peach. But we're still about giving back to the people. Giving them a stabbing. Yo, boss! PR time! And this is how we write people. Alright. Look at my fox. It's very cute, is it not? Now that Waki's not paying any attention. Something. I am really read. I'm pretty sure I read that wrong. But the text, it scrolls a little too fast for me to read and say out loud. Especially if I want to make a joke. Bizoy! Chinese characters on the cake was a fly idea like 3,000 years ago. Man, you want to make it today, you got to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Yo, that's why I made the OG cracker. For real, I know it's not a cracker. Shut up. I know it don't look like no cracker G. What? You want me to call it the OG muffin? Fucking crazy. Get the hell out of my face. Who 
booze left out of this guy. I don't know where let's talk about food's coming from. You ask me, it's only one food. That's noodles. Noodles forever. Yeah, that should be the next game. I got a new one, see? See, this time, I just put a big chunk of salt in the bowl. <laughs> no noodle. Why pretend? Elden's noodles all about the salt. Salt forever. Vote for that guy. Yeah, he's still running. I know it's been six months. Whatever. It's a long election period. Why is the cart still there? My exceptionally inquisitive nature has won me unequivocal adoration in the apartment. You see, they used to call me Weasley Stinkler and Weasley Sticky Hands. But no longer I have a new name, one that reflects my true academic nature. Weasley Sicko reporting. Yes, curiosity is a sickness and I am the cure. Is that everybody? Those really kind of put into perspective how few characters there are in the game. I mean, I guess the judge, he didn't get one. Oh, you, you, you exist. I don't know how to think of what you have done. Let us return to my life and with it joy. I may have lost years, but I have gained a treasure. Two treasures, in fact. I guess the, the convicted people don't show up. I will think of them when I write my next song. I guess there's those guys. I guess it's just Kristoff twice, uh, Chickadee, and uh, Shark Boy. Brushel, Brushel, Brushel. Brushel here, back on the beat with another interview. Yeah. How do I feel about how things turned out? Uh, why am I in prison? No scoop yet, but journalist's confidence in mint condition. End quote. I can only assume they arrested his ass. <laughs> he, is a, he is a criminal of the highest nature. I decided to keep painting. Originals only, of course. I suppose I'll have to see a bit of the world outside to find what to paint. But I know there are good people out there now. I've met them. I guess you'd also have the characters that fucking get their ass killed. Which granted, really only Drew Misham and to a lesser extent Russian man show up in any real capacity. I guess Shoddy kind of shows up in retrospect. Who dies in the second case? Nobody knows. Oh yeah, just guy dude. He doesn't really ever talk. Except for like one flashback, kind of. We cool? We cool. Alright, well, um... Yeah, so we'll start with just talking about Trial 4. Definitely the ending was a little... Not what I expected. Like, I thought that whole final trial se sequence would be longer, but I get it. It is kind of like two trials in one. And there is that really long computer investigation sequence. There only being one cross-examination, though, is kind of wild. I, I didn't really notice that at the time. But definitely a little weird. Um, I didn't dislike the final trial section. I thought it was pretty good. Like, I had no problem with the prompts. A few of them were like a little, like especially the last, uh, like the cross-examination was really lackluster, I felt. Like it's, you know, it's just like the second thing you see, which is fine. I don't really like the looking at thing mechanic in the first place. So it, that being easy isn't really a a problem for me. I, I don't think it's a very good mechanic, personally. And basically everything except the sweat prompts are like whatever. I think there's like one Lamy Roar one that I can't remember. I remember that one took me like a little bit to find, but that was also like, I think I just was overlooking it. Like I was looking at it, but I just wasn't seeing the movement. The sweat prompt is egregious though, and the game is bad, and you can't convince me otherwise for that. Um, or at least that prompt is bad. Yeah, it's definitely a trial that like, I think the start is really pretty weak, but the ending's good. It's definitely, it's still the best trial. Well, I don't know. I had some problems with Trial 3. I guess Trial 4 is still the best. Because it has problems. Like, I think gameplay-wise, it's worse than the first three. 
even if the end point's pretty solid, well, the investigation's a little iffy. It has some kind of dumb shit, like the the stamp prompt. But really, everything past the stamp prompt was fine. I think that was the last just, like, really infuriating moment. I mean, there was, like, some slightly annoying things, like when you had to present the locket to get dude to talk instead of just him unlocking the dialogue naturally after mentioning that he knew the lassa. That was weird. I think my biggest problem, though, is just... Like, I don't know. Something about Trial 4 still just felt, like, a little unfulfilling. I don't know. I guess, like, the explanation for Kristoff was... I was hoping for something more. I think what they had was fine. Having the extra element of, like, personalized revenge for Phoenix... Is something... I don't know. I guess I was just expecting a bit more there. They didn't explain some of the most important stuff. Like, I mean, he got kidnapped Vera, apparently. And that's not really touched on. You know, the way he got her, like the way he convinced her to be so bought into this idea of not going outside and using the nail polish and how no one ever questioned the idea that she would have not used this nail polish for seven years is, I mean, I do think there is kind of an explanation for it. Well, actually, I mean, they really never, because we see her using the nail polish several times before, uh, she gets pressed. And I guess they say that, I mean, they have the whole nail biting thing, but I still think it'd be very easy if you just touch your lips and get poisoned that way. I mean, think of how many times you unconsciously touch your face. Like, that's that's the reason why washing your hands is so important. Because you're just constantly, you're touching stuff without thinking about it. And I mean, nails are a little bit different than your fingers, but still, same concept. You, know, you eat something and you wipe your face and you got the nail polish on and you're dead. And we saw that she was using it several days before she actually died. But, um, yeah, I, I, it's just one of those things that, like, it kind of annoyed me because there was a, a slightly plausible explanation of, like, the bottle's bigger and the poison settles at the bottom and only it would only start to get poison on it towards the end. Like, I don't know. I, I, I would kind of buy that something like that to explain why it would have only just now poisoned her seven years later, but they just never really ask any questions or press you in that manner, even though I think there is kind of a somewhat clever explanation for it. And then just the whole setup of, like, you accuse him of, uh, Kristoff of poisoning, and then there's no pushback whatsoever is just really awkward and clumsy. I'm trying to think. Other stuff. I mean, overall, it's definitely my least favorite of the three prior, or, like, of the four games I've played. Like, I would say, I mean, it's weird. Because, like, I don't know. Like, the, I don't even know how much I like the Ace Attorney games, if I'm being completely honest. Because, um, like, it's generally the loop is, we start them, I'm like, wow, this is a lot of fun. Then I get kind of annoyed with them, and then I don't really want to play them anymore, but I still push through and finish them. And then, like, you know, six months later, I'm like, ah, you know, I kind of had a fun time with those Ace Attorney games, and I can't think of anything else to play. And then I start playing, I'm having a fun time. I'm like, oh, man, why did I wait so long to play this? And then the game gets kind of ass. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's why. Um, And then I go through the cycle of, like, I get an annoying comment, and it's like, I don't want to, I never want to record this game again. And then I get, like, a not annoying comment. I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll keep playing these games. So, like, I'm undecided. I definitely, like... I mean, I had a mostly good time. I really only had a straight-up unfun time during the start of uh, this trial. But I d it's just one of those things where it's like I think about it, and I'm like, I don't really think any of the trials were particularly good. They had some good moments. They were they were fun times. Like, I mean, I, I enjoyed, like, the comedic aspect of the game. Like I, I, like, I feel like it gives me a lot to work with in terms of entertainment. But I don't actually know how much I like them as games, if I'm being completely honest. So I, I'm not, I'm a little, 
I'm a little unsure on the future of the series. I'll probably play more just because, like, I'm committed at this point to playing them every once in a while. So I would expect more Ace Attorney, but there is a part of me that's like, I don't know. Now, I should also add that this is apparently the worst game in the series, is what I've been told throughout playing the games, right? The, the Apollo Justice game is, like, generally considered the worst. I mean, I was told that before I even started this game. Um, so I'm not holding it too much against the series, but, I mean, I do also have to admit, right, like, the first three games of the trilogy I had similar problems with where they kind of, like, annoy me at times, but I do think they provide a good avenue for comedy and entertainment. But this is definitely the one that I felt was the most shaky. I mean, there's, like, some neat stuff. Like, I think the actual, the last, like, three hours of the game were pretty good. So, like, I'm feeling good about it, but I'm also, like, I don't know. I don't want to, like... I don't want to have, like, the last few hours of the game overshadow how kind of annoyed I was with some of the stuff prior to that. But overall, I mean, I still think the game is, like, good. And they're fun. But I'm undecided on, like, how good they are. Uh, you know, just talking about the game as a whole as well. I mean, I think I, I do have a bit of an issue with, like, Apollo, like... Like, it, it's just this whole, like, hey, we have a new protagonist, uh, which is fine. I'm not against the idea of having a new protagonist. Um, the problem is Apollo is just, like, way too similar to Phoenix, and they, they do this kind of, like, weird half measure where Phoenix is still, like, a major part of the story, which kind of makes it, like, why not just keep Phoenix as the protagonist, you know? Or it's like, I don't know, it's like, like, Phoenix is in the game enough that you're like, you wish he was in more, but at the same time, he's in it so much that it feels like he kind of overshadows Apollo's story. Because I feel like Apollo doesn't really have much of, like, an arc or anything in this game itself. Right? Like, even the last case is, I mean, granted, the first game is kind of sim similar to that, too. Like, the first Ace Attorney game, where Phoenix is kind of incidental. I think it's part of the reason why I like the story of the final case of Phoenix Wright 2 so much. I do not like the case from a gameplay perspective. I think it has some like horrendous prompts. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but I do remember like being really mad at like a lot of the logic for the gameplay stuff. But the story there was really good and is still like the peak of the series for me. Like, Phoenix coming to accept that he has to throw this... You know, it's the classic legal conundrum of... Or, like, the moral ethical question of representing a guilty client. And seeing such a lighthearted series kind of take on that in a fairly serious manner was nice and refreshing. And I like the way it's handled in that game. Story-wise, prompts are bad, but, you know... Overall, this game is an improvement on the gameplay side, other than just some truly heinous shit in trial four or at least the first like basically the first half like the whole first trial section plus the first like half of the investigation uh well i'm trying to i think the phoenix Wright flashback section wasn't so bad it was really just some of the investigation computer stuff and uh the very first trial section with vera but yeah Overall, I'm just kind of like rambling at this point. I can't think of anything more in particular to say. I enjoyed the game. All very likely will play all the remaining Ace Attorney games in all likely because it's like one of the things. If I play the next one, I'm gonna play the third and the like the second trilogy, and then it's gonna be like ah, you gotta play the great Ace Attorney games too because they're supposedly like the best they have. And I'm going to be like, ah, oh, okay, fine, I'll play those too. Um, there was a point, though, I will say, like, at the start of this trial, where I was like, I am never fucking touching these games again <laughs> after I'm done. But I'm I'm feeling much more mellowed out 
just like not just because the tr the ending like wasn't annoying gameplay was um i think it was just like i was fed up in the moment as well at how dumb it was some of the stuff and then plus knowing that like i'm probably going to get like at least a few annoying comments from uh people that will have to then be shadow banned um you know <laughs> And it's like I'm opening myself because I mean I still occasionally get annoying comments on like the original three Let's Plays that were like years ago. You just get like a random notification and it's someone just typing some nonsense, and I'm like, you don't clearly don't understand what I'm talking about. Or like the the complaint that I always find so annoying, which is that like they don't ever like say why I'm wrong. They're just like you complain too much, which is like okay, maybe. Am I wrong? Is my logic flawed? No? Okay. I, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, let, let's end this video now. Um, yeah. Overall, pretty good time. I definitely like had a, a fantastic time at the start. Like I mean, I do think these these series are pretty entertaining. Um, they provide a great avenue for comedy, and I have fun with them, even if I do get annoyed at them at the same time. And I have dubious opinions on on the actual quality of the stories themselves, but they are fun. I'm extra cheesy eighty seven. Stay tuned for the next let's play. And bye, guys.